Arrival's not the end game. Arrival's not the end game. The journey's where you are. No, you never wanted perfect. You just wanted my heart. And the story isn't over. If the story isn't good, your failure's never final when the father's in the room. Failure's never final when the father's in the room. Oh, lay your burdens down. No, oh, here in the father's house, check your shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore. Prodigals come home, the helpless find home. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. And prison doors fling wide, the dead come to life. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. Miracles, miracles take place, the cynical find faith. Love is breaking through when the father's in the room. Jericho, Jericho walls are quaking, strongholds now are shaking. Love is breaking through when the father's in the room. Love is, love is breaking through when the father's in the room. Oh, they open it. Shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore. Oh, you're in the Father's Awesome job. Thank you guys so much for getting us in the spirit so early. Welcome everyone. You can have a seat for a moment. I'm going to share some announcements with you. While I do that, if you will pick up the registration pads and the offering baskets and register your attendance, put your offering in and pass that on down your row. We would appreciate it. Everyone made it here safely. Thank the Lord. Boy, there's some water coming down today. <laughs> so we're glad that you're here. If you're worshiping with us online, we're also uh, happy that you're joining us. We have a lot going on, so I encourage you to pick up an announcement sheet out here on the table. I'm not going to go through them all, but let me share with you a few things. Um, first of all, we, of course, have today's Communion Sunday, uh, and we have our Blue Bonnet Communion this afternoon. But Communion is open to all uh, so you will have a chance to partake in that. And we have the Reverend Nick Schollers here with us today. He's going to be bringing our message and uh, serving communion uh, today. So we're happy to have you here, sir. Uh, Reverend Schollers is a pr area presiding elder. Uh, along with David, they work together as a team. 
And so we are very blessed to have him here with us to bring a message. Um, also going on this week, we've got the East Texas Food Bank Ministry that is going to be um, working at 8.30 in the morning on Tuesday. We also have the ruthless elimination of Hurry Bible Study. David will be back for that. So if you've signed up for that, that does start um, this week. So be sure to, to show up at 2 o'clock. Um, also, we have Potluck with a Purpose on Wednesday at 5.30, and there is a theme. Uh, they are asking you to bring your favorite decorations. A few of my favorite things is the theme. So bring your decorations for, uh, to decorate a table. Uh, also, of course, if you'll bring some canned goods to share with the Mission House, that is our purpose, to uh, benefit others while we gather together. Uh, in fellowship. We've also got um, our youth and children's fundraiser. Listen, this is really important. It's next Sunday on Mother's Day. They're going to be selling baked goods and all the proceeds are going to help them go to camp, raise money for them to go to camp. So you can help in a couple of ways. One, you can make sure that all of their baked goods are sold out, that you buy them all. Uh, two, if you can donate baked goods for them to sell, they would love that as well. And if you have any questions about that, Miss Allison is here, and she's kind of heading that up so you can talk to her. But please be sure and bring some extra money, cash, uh, next Sunday so that you can help these kiddos go to camp. We have a there you go. Checks, Venmo, no credit cards. <laughs> Checks, Venmo, or cash. So that'll, that'll be great. Um, Mission Barrel for May, we are benefiting the church under the bridge. Um, and so we're asking you to bring several different items, uh, things like bug spray, sunscreen, batteries. Uh, you see some snacks there, bottled water. All of those things, if you'll bring those the month of May and put those in the mission barrel, this is such a great ministry. Um, they help those who are really, really down, homeless, um, people who are in extreme need. So anything that you can do to help, we would appreciate. I think that's all the announcements that I'm going to share. David is back this week. So all of his scheduled things will go on as usual. So anything else I missed? Okay, well, let's stand up and greet one another as we move into worship. Go before I know that you've even gone to win my war. You come back with the head of my enemy. You came back and you called it my victory. Love 
becomes my greatest defense Leads me from the dry wilderness And all I did was pray And all I did was worship All I did was bow down did was stay still sing hallelujah Oh. 
saved me. It's so much better your way. And hallelujah, great defender. So much better your way. So much better. So much better, oh, it's so much better. It's so much better, oh, Son of David, don't pass me by. I'm a blind.
God, we thank you for this morning. God, we stand in awe of what your presence can do. Your amazing and wonderful presence, and we humbly ask that as we continue this morning, you stay in this place. We love you, Lord. It's in your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. If you'll turn your attention to the screen. Our scripture this morning is Numbers 17, 13, 17 through 20, and then 30 through 31. And my remarks this morning will be based on what we read here in scripture. So I think as maybe a little bit of a change for us, uh, let's all stand and read the scripture together, please. Then Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, Go up this way into the south and go up to the mountains and see what the land is like, whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many, whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds, whether the land is rich or poor, and whether there are forests there or not. Be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once to take possession. For we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. You may be seated. What I want to visit with you about this morning is about this idea of when you begin to look at your life, do you see the possibilities or do you see the problems? Now, I know in our day and age, it's very easy, I think, to get caught up in all the problems of life that we see around us. I don't know about you, but I have limited myself on internet time because I'm always reading the news and the news seems always consumed with problems. I never see very many possibilities offered in the news time. When you begin to think about your church, okay, your church right here in Bullard, do you begin to see the problems or do you, do you begin to see the possibilities? That's a question. Possibilities, okay. Do you see the problems and do we come, become consumed by the problems or do we see the opportunity of possibilities that are open to us? Now let's be real honest, okay. Bullard is one of the fastest growing communities around Tyler, right? That's not a very enthusiastic response. Bullard is one of the fastest growing communities around Tyler, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely it is. Bullard has one of the finest uh, school facilities. If you read the paper very carefully, every playoff game is seemingly played in Bullard because of the fine facilities. So do we see the problems or do we see the possibilities? Now what's interesting about that is that the choice belongs squarely with each one of you. You are the ones that make the choice to see the possibilities or to see the problems and become con consumed by them. That's your choice. That's not a choice that a pastor makes. That is not a choice that an administrative council makes. But that is a choice that you make individually for yourself and for your church that you are a part of. Now, in the New Testament, Paul talks about people that find themselves 
partaking of the milk or partaking of the solid food. And what he's talking about there is that the baby Christians are the ones that are on the milk and the ones that are grown up in the faith are the ones that are on the solid food. So I would ask you this morning, which are you partaking of? Are you partaking of the milk or are you partaking of the solid food that is offered to us? The solid food of God's word. The solid food of God's church. The God, solid food of God's kingdom. Which are you partaking of? And what the Bible teaches us very clearly is that if we are going to see the possibilities, we have to be the people that are partaking of the solid food. We can no longer take just the milk. We have to move ourselves where we're partaking of the solid food that God offers to us in Jesus Christ. Now, our call from God is to do big things for him. And the only way we're going to be able to do big things for him is to be partaking of the solid food that is offered to you. I have an old story that I hesitate to tell because it's so ancient, but I think it fits the bill for what we're talking about here. The story is told that there was a shoe company, and they had these two Cracker Jack shoe sales. And so what they did is they took the first salesman and they sent him to a remote part of Africa and they expected him to build up a business there in that remote part of Africa. Well, as soon as he arrived in that African village, he began to notice that no one wore shoes. So he sent a telegram back to his home company and said, there are no possibilities here. No one wears shoes. So they brought him back to the main office and they sent their other Cracker Jack salesman over there to that same area. And that salesman got there and was there just a few days and began to notice that no one wore shoes. He sent back an order to the main company and said, the possibilities are unlimited. No one wears shoes here. And he said, stand by for further orders. Now, which one saw the possibilities? The second one. Which one saw the problems? The first one. And where do we find ourselves in that story? Do we find ourselves as the Cracker Jack second salesman? Or do we find ourselves in the first sales. As presiding elder over this area that starts in, Tammy didn't tell you this, it starts in Grapeland and it goes all the way to the Red River. There's 90 some odd churches that David and I are responsible for. There are some that we can't even find, much less go to. I did find one at Reeves Chapel. It's out in this middle, middle of this guy's cow pasture. And you think, well, that can't be real. You go to Reeves Chapel outside of Leesville, outside of Pittsburgh, and see if I'm not right about that, you know. Here's the thing that troubles me. I find myself coming to churches, and Lord can be excluded from this somewhat, in fast-growing communities, and I find the churches to be shrinking. Now, I have the Jacksonville circuit, which encompasses the Jacksonville area. It's about nine churches in that circuit area. I only have one church that averages more than 50 on Sunday morning in attendance. Only one out of those nine. Now, folks, that's what happens when we don't look at the possibilities. That's what happens when we begin to be consumed by the problems rather than the possibilities that are open to us. Now, you're going to ask me the question, how can we be people who see possibilities? Well, the scripture tells us this morning that 12 spies were sent out to spy out the promised land. 
And you remember that 10 came back with a very negative report and said, we're not able to take the land because there are these giants there. They are the sons of Anak. And said, we're not able to take the land. The other two spies were Caleb and Joshua, were their names, and they came back and they said, we are grasshoppers in their sight, but we can take the land. He said, the land is filled with milk and honey, as the Bible tells us, and that we can take the land that has been given to us. So here were 12 spies that were sent out. Ten came back talking about the problems, didn't they? And only two came back to see the possibilities that were open to them. So are we going to be a people of God who are looking at possibilities? Or are we going to be a people of God that are looking at the problems? Now, the question comes up. How is it that we become people that look at the possibilities? The very first thing that must happen if you're going to see the possibilities in life and in church life, you have to have a vision. You have to have a vision and a mission. Okay? If if I were to ask you this morning, what is the mission of this church? Could you tell me? Make disciples. Now, you can read on the bottom of your bulletin this morning. And, and, and that is in blueprint. Can I help you here? And you can read that. And that's the conference mission. My question is, what is Bullard Methodist mission? I, I want to tell you a quick story. Do any of you know about a, a lady's wear place, clothing place by the name of Chico's that's in Tyler. Hello? Not you guys, you know. I went in there and I asked them, I said, where's the men's section? They said, right there, there was a chair for me to sit in. You know? So, this Chico's, my wife buys all of her stuff there. She is the biggest advocate of Chico's that there is. They can quit spending money on sending out catalogs. They have my wife. She is the best salesman they've ever had, and she didn't even work there. She understands the mission of that place. It sells these nice clothes. And for a long time, she orders them, too. And for a long time, I thought that when the UPS guy came, that that stuff came free. I've discovered that's not free. I saw my credit card. Am I that slow? Yeah. I, I, it's not free. That, that stuff costs money. But she's a very big advocate of that place. We hardly ever come into Tyler without going by there to take a look at what's new and what's there. So my question for you this morning is, do you know the mission of your church? Do you have a mission here in Bullard? And if you're going to see the possibilities, you're going to have to have. You're going to have to have a vision. You're going to have to have a, you're going to have to have a mission. You're going to have to have a purpose for what this church is all about. For instance, if this church didn't exist, what would be missing in this community? That may be your purpose. That may be your purpose to fulfill here in this community. And if you're going to see the possibilities, you're going to have to have a sense of mission. And you've got to embrace it. You've got to know it. You've got to be able to speak it. When I was called in the ministry 142 years ago, that's how long it was, you know. Because I'm 104 now, so, you know. I was called to help people. I was called to help people. It was that simple. And I've tried to stay true to that throughout all these years of doing ministry. My question for you is, what is your purpose as a believer in Jesus Christ? What is your mission 
as a believer in Jesus Christ? Can you articulate that to someone? Can you describe that to someone else? Give my wife a call this afternoon. She can explain to you what's on sale at Chico's. She can tell you about every sale they have and how much you get off on each sale, on each purchase. So, what is your mission? Second thing is this. If you're going to see the possibilities, you're going to have to have a sense of strength. And it's going to have to be a sense of strength that is beyond yourself. It can't be in and of your own strength, and it can't be from your own finite thinking. It has to be a God breathed into us that we begin to expel out into the world. It has to happen in here. It has to happen within us. Not by our own strength, but by God's strength that lives in us through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the way we have strength. We have strength when God is born within us through Jesus Christ. We have strength when we understand that the Holy Spirit is giving us guidance and direction. We have strength when we understand that we have a newness of life, that we have been forgiven of our sins and that we have been renewed, redeemed, and restored, and that we have a new beginning in life. That's how we have strength. Not strength of our own. First ten spies had no strength at all. They came back and they said, we are grasshoppers in their sight. There's no way we can take the land. But the other two, Caleb and Joshua, came back and they had a strength beyond themselves because God's strength was within them. And because of God's strength being within them, they were able to come back and say, the land we can take. The land can be taken and we can occupy the land. So, can you say that you have a mission in your life? Can you say that you have strength that is not of your own making? And the third thing is this. To see the possibilities, you must have a dependence upon God. A dependence upon God. My wife and I are at the age where we have grown adult children absolutely great to watch them raise their own children it's so much fun they pay for all their raising it is just great the little one is 11 the little grandson is 11 and he's a pretty picky eater um, peanut butter and jelly and macaroni and cheese that's about the diet Apparently, he was asked to eat something beyond that, and he rebelled. Well, his mother was in his face, and it was so much fun to watch that. We had so many discussions with her about her diet while she was growing up, too. And I watched that, and I said, this is absolutely incredible. And I learned by watching that how dependent those two children they're 11 and 13 how dependent they are on their parents for everything and their parents are really good parents but they're very dependent upon their parents and I wonder do you and I have that same kind of dependence upon God as my little grandchildren do upon their parents a dependence on God is it's not to say that we're weak. It doesn't mean that we're weak. It simply means that we are strong and that we go to the source of our strength and of our mission and of our dependence. So, do you have a dependence upon the God who made us and who redeems us and who restores us? So, I pose the question to you again. In your life, do you see the problems or do you see the possibilities? In your church, do you see the problems or do you see the possibilities? 
That's the question that is offered to us this morning. And that is a question that you and I can answer for ourselves. We can have our own mission. We can have our own strength from God. And we can have a dependence upon Him. When you see life, do you see the problems? Or do you see the possibilities? Let's pray together. Oh Lord our God, we thank you that you live and reign in each one of us. And because you live and reign in each one of us, we can have a purpose. We can have a mission to fulfill. And we pray, oh Lord, that you might give us the strength which is beyond our strength. And you might give us a total and complete dependence upon you and upon you alone so that we might fulfill the calling that you have made upon our lives. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We will celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. I will open the table to you and I will simply say that this is the Lord's table. And of course, this table does not belong to the Global Methodist Church. It does not belong to the Bullard Methodist Church. It's not my table. It's not David's table as pastors. But it is the Lord's table. And the bread and the juice that we have this morning are representatives of God's love to us and are representatives of Jesus' body and blood. Now, our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters believe in something called transubstantiation. And by that, they believe that the, the bread and the wine are the actual body and blood of Jesus. But we in the Global Methodist Church believe that these are representatives of Jesus' body and blood. Now, I think they're more than symbols. A lot of people have said, well, they are symbols of Jesus' body and blood. No, they are much more than that. They are representative of Jesus' body and blood. So it might be that you're here this morning and you're not a member of this church. It might be that you're not a member of any church anywhere. But if you're a follower of Jesus Christ our Lord, you're invited to come and to receive these elements that are offered to you. So this is the Lord's table, and uh, we invite you to come. I'll ask our ushers to come and help at this time, communion assistance. This is the body of Christ, given for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. This is the blood of Christ, given for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Now let us bow for a few moments of silent meditation as we confess our sins and our shortcomings unto God, knowing that we are about to be forgiven and we are about to be renewed by the partaking of his body and of his blood. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may come as you feel led this morning.
Let's all stand for our benediction. And now, with the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you both now and forevermore. Amen. Good morning. God bless you. Shake hands and be friendly.